Hello, everyone. I hope that you're enjoying the Azure Serverless Conference. This is an on-demand session, and I hope that you enjoy and learn for, from what I'll be presenting today. My name is Paco de la Cruz, and the session is Monitoring Logic Apps with Application Insights. Before we continue, let me share a little bit about me. I work in Deloitte Australia as a Senior Cloud Solution Architect in the Platform and Cloud Engineering team. I'm also a Microsoft Azure MVP, and you can follow me on Twitter or on the different social media handles that you see on the screen. And in case this is not obvious, uh, all the opinions expressed here are all my own and do not express the views of my employer. The agenda for this session. So first, I'm going to be covering Logic App Standard, just a very brief overview. Then we're going to see the different observability features that we have on Logic App in their built-in, and how Logic Apps is integrated with Application Insights. Then we're going to see the built-in tracing logs of Logic Apps workloads into Application Insights. Then how we can query and create charts using KQL, or Custo Query Language, and how we can publish and share these queries and charts using Azure dashboards. All the code that I'll be sharing here is in, on GitHub, on this repository on the slide. And this includes the workflows and also the, the queries that I'll be, I'll be presenting, queries and charts. Logic Standard was released in May this year as generally available. It's a single tenant offering, meaning all your workflows and built-in connectors run within your own instances, and these instances can scale out, very similar to what you get with Azure Functions Premium. And indeed, Logic App Standard runs within the Azure Functions runtime, which gives you most of the features that you get with Azure Functions, including virtual network support. So for example, you could protect your HTTP triggered workflows using private endpoints, meaning your workflows can only be called within your private network. And similarly, you can connect to resources in your private network from your Logic Apps. We also have built-in connectors that execute within the context of your Logic App, and that also allows better throughput. And we also have stateless workflows. In Logic App's consumption, all the workflows were stateful, but now we also have stateless, which, again, gives you better throughput. And the only disadvantage of stateless workflows is that um, you don't have all the history of your workflows. Like, for example, you cannot see ins, inputs and outputs of your actions or triggers. On top of that, you get local development with VS Code. So you can develop your workflows, call your built-in connectors, and debug all locally without needing to connect to, to Azure. And then if you need to connect to Azure Managed Connectors, then you can always do that from your VS Code. With Logic App Standard, we also got a new workflow designer. And one of the key differentiations, I would say, is enhanced DevOps automation. So you can very easily parameterize your workflows to be deployed to multiple environments, like, from, for example, from development to integration testing, to user acceptance testing, all the way to production. In Logic App Standard, workflows can also be deployed to Azure Arc, meaning you can run Logic App's workflows on-premises or on different clouds. Logic Apps provides some built-in observability features, and this is true even for consumption. So every time you run a workflow, you, you would see it listed in the workflow run history, and there is also a trigger history. And um, in the run history and trigger history, you have a run identifier, and you can search using that, that run identifier. I'm going to show you that in the demo. Also. For stateful workflows, you can see the trigger inputs and outputs. And also for every action, you can see the inputs and outputs that you can inspect in case you, you need to troubleshoot the execution of our workflow. On top of that, you can track some, some metadata, custom metadata. Like for example, for every instance, you can store a custom tracking ID. Like for example, if you were processing purchase orders, you could store the PO number. If you're processing invoices, you can store the invoice number, right? And that will allow you to search for the instance of a workflow that processes that particular PO or that particular invoice. You can also add track, uh, 
track properties. So the difference between the custom tracking ID and track properties is that custom tracking ID is tracked at the trigger level, and track properties can be tracked at, at any action. And track properties can track action uh, inputs and outputs for that very action. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show that in the demo. Additionally, you can also have some error handling, like, like for example, running an action if a previous action or a previous code failed, right? And then within the error handling, we can terminate the workflow using a custom error message or custom error code. And again, this is to provide more information for the operations team. I'm going to show all of that in the demo. Logic Caps provide provides uh, inter deep integration with application insights. So all the actions, all the triggers emit diagnostic logs or diagnostic tracing logs to application insights out of the box. So we don't need to worry about this. On top of that, all the metrics of Azure Functions are being stored on application insights. We also have an application map that shows us all the dependencies, if there are bottlenecks, if there are errors calling these dependencies. Uh, all these tracing logs can be queried using KQL or Custo query language. And we can also create charts based on these tracing log queries. I'm going to show that in the demo. This is a scenario I'll be using as part of my demo. So we will have one logic cap with two workflows. And here, this is an integration scenario. So I have a publisher workflow and a subscriber uh, workflow. So I'm using the PubSub integration pattern. The publisher workflow receives um, a batch of user updated events from a webhook. So imagine you have a HR system that um, that is emitting events with a batch of user updated events. Every time they up update a user in that system, they they batch those events and then push it to the logic app workflow as a HTTP call. Then the, the publisher workflow receives the batch, splits the message into individual messages, drops them into a queue. And then there is a subscriber workflow that is listening to this queue and then process these messages one by one. And then this subscriber workflow uh, at the end pushes the message to a storage account. Again, these are just for demo purposes. And I'll, I'll be um, in the subscriber workflow, I, I'll be simulating some different scenarios that could happen in, in, in real case scenarios. And all of this is instrumented using application insights. So let's jump into the demo. First, I'm going to show you what we're sending to, to the publisher workflow, right? So this is a, this is a batch of events, user updated events. And I'm using cloud events specification here. As you can see, there's an ID. And this is the ID I'll be using as, as the cost, custom tracking ID in my workflow. All right. Um, so let me share with you. The logic app. So this logic app has two workflows, the publisher and the subscriber. It also has app insights configured already. So as you can see here, app insights integration is enabled and is linked to this app insights instance. This is the first workflow. So we have a HTTP trigger and the HTTP trigger we have configure the custom tracking ID. In this case, I'm reading from the trigger body, the ID property that I showed in the in sample request. I'm, I'm using coalesce here. In case the property is not uh, available, then I can always use a GUI. And then in the next action, I'm using track properties. So in this case, there was a business requirement to have an interface ID for every single workflow. So they can correlate with um, a business identifier. So I'm, I'm assigning this interface ID, and then I'm telling Logic Apps to, to track that as, as a track property. Right? So I say track this interface ID track property, and I'm tra uh, tracking the output of this very same action. 
then I parse the request payload with a schema, JSON schema. If this is not valid, then I return 400 bad requests. And then I'm using terminate as failed to be able to, tr to log the error with a particular error code in a particular error message. If the payload was valid, then I'm parsing message by message. In this case, just to tokenize some of the properties, and then I'm sending the message to, to a service host queue. If everything went well, then I return 202 to the webhook. Otherwise, I return 500. And again, I'm simulating with a custom error code and custom error message. So this is the first workflow. And then the second workflow receives the message from the queue. And again, I'm tracking a custom tracking ID. And in this case, it's a property coming from the message itself. And I'm populating the email to be this client tracking ID coming from the services message in the previous workflow. Then again, I'm tracing or tracking a custom property here. So I have interface ID with this ID, and then I'm configuring this as a track property. Then some delay just to simulate some processing, parsing the message, and uh, you need to pay a lot of attention to this logic, but the only thing that is important here is that I'm sim simulating different scenarios, and each scenario terminates the um, workload with different error codes. Like for example, if there is a missing dependency on the target system, then only if it's the first attempt, I'm simulating this error with this particular error code and this particular message. And as you can see here, I'm including the delivery count. So the operators can, can, can know if this message is being retried multiple times. So this is the delivery count that is coming from the service bus message. And then again, different scenarios. And then if none of, none of these scenarios are true, then I continue and I save the message to a blob storage and complete the message from the queue. So now let's see the run history. This is a run history for the publisher, right? You can see all the times that this workflow has been running. Each run, each run has a run ID and a status. And then there is also the trigger history. Right. Every time this workflow has been triggered, we can see the history here. And if we go into the instance, this is the run view of the workflow, then we can see all the inputs and outputs for the trigger and the actions. So we can see here, these are the inputs of the message. Um, this failed, right? This, this was an invalid message. So, but we can see also the client tracking ID, the parsing failed, so it went this, this path, and then the workflow was terminated as failed. That was because the payload was not valid. Right? So we can we can troubleshoot what happened to our workflow. This is all built in within the logic apps. So we haven't seen what we can do with, with application insights. Same for the subscriber, we see the different instances and the properties and all that. In the case of the subscriber, we're using the email within the individual record as client tracking ID or custom tracking ID. We're going to see this in a second. So we can see the client tracking ID is the email of the user that is being passed from the webhook. In this case, this is a subscriber workflow already. So because App Insights is already configured, uh, app, we, can, we can have the different features for App Insights. So in, for example, we have the application map. This is the logic app and how the logic app is calling different dependencies. In this case, there is a blob, Azure blob, and also the, all the managed connectors, Azure managed connectors. But if we were calling standard external IPs or sorry, external APIs or databases, we would see all the dependencies, if there are bottlenecks, if there are errors and all that, which is quite handy. We can also see failures, we can see metrics. And then 
I'll jump into the logs. So the logs, as I mentioned, all the workloads are emitting distributed tracing by default. And this is very, very powerful. So for example, if I query just the traces without any, any filter in the last four hours, I'll see all the events that are being stored in application insights, right? So all these properties. It's very verbose, but very useful for troubleshooting, right? So now we can start filtering these traces. So for example, I want only the last trace per workflow instance. In this case, I say where the operation name is flow run last job. If I run this one, then I get um, the last trace for that workflow, right? And then I can start adding additional filters or projections or extensions, right? So for example, I have this uh, query already ready. So I'm saying, give me all the traces where the operation name is flow run last job. Then I'm extending this property, which is under custom dimensions pro properties, and then the resource. These are stored in JSON, so I'm parsing them as JSON, and then extending it as a property, right? And then I can create a chart based on this. I can say, I want it to be a stack bar chart, and then I can see the failed instances per workflow, right? So you have this in your solution, you might have more than two workflows and then you can see which workflows are failing the different instances. And then you can get more details. So this is a similar query, but now we are projecting more properties here, like logic app name, workflow, workflow run ID, client tracking ID, workflow status, error code and error message. And then, so remember all of these are tracing logs. So I'm joining the, the tracing log that is the flow run last job with a tracing log that has track properties. So I'm saying where it has track properties and the track properties has an interface ID because so I'm interested in that one that I'm tracking as part of my workflows, then I'm projecting all of these properties uh, after the join. I'm sorting by timestamp, and uh, I I'm interested on the ones that have failed. So if I run this one in the last 24 hours, then I see, okay, this is my interface ID, this is my logic app, this is my workflow, this is the workflow run ID, this is the client tracking ID, right? I get the status, I get the error code and the error message. And this is quite handy because if I'm troubleshooting, for example, I'm interested on, on events where PacoD is the, is the user ID. Oops. Sorry. These are the workflow instances. So I can grab this workflow run ID go to my run history and then say, give me that workflow instance. So I can troubleshoot and see what happened with this instance, right? So I went from a client tracking ID that uh, that I stored in, in application insights, ran that query, got the workflow run ID, went to the instance, and then I can easily see here, okay, it went this path, or oh, the system was, was not available, so the, this is the error code that, that we're sending, right? In this case, just a simulation. And for example, here, I can see delivery, delivery count is three. In this case, I know that three is the max delivery count, meaning that I know that this, this won't be retried anymore. So yeah, this will give me all these details. Very useful when troubleshooting. I can also filter, for example, I'm interested in the publisher side only. You can say the interface ID, 
contains or equals this value. So these are the, the workflows that fail for this particular interface ID. I could also filter by workflow name, or I could say, give me those that were canceled as opposed to failed, right? So I can have all these filters. SQL is very extensible and being a piped pipe language is very easy to just um, customize your queries and extend your queries. We also have queries for triggers. So for example, give me all the triggers that failed in the last three days in a chart or give me the details of the triggers that failed in the last three days. And all these queries can be pinned to a dashboard. So for example, if I like this, this query, I can pin it to, that, to a dashboard. This is an Azure dashboard. I have already created a shared Azure dashboard. I say I will pin this to this existing dashboard. If I pin it, then I would get something like this. So in this case, this dashboard was already ready. But um, I pinned all these all these widgets. So I have fail logic app workflows in the last three days. I can change here the, the time range. In this case, the last three days. So I can see, okay, this workflow failed 30 times on the 21st of this month, and so on and so forth. Right? Very useful. Same, I could go into the details. And um, I could um, I could then click here and go to the App Insights, but let's finish here. So again, I'm seeing here the failed triggers in the last three days, and then details. And I could even edit the query of my dashboard here if I needed to, or I could go and expand this query and then start customizing my query based on my needs. So as I mentioned, all of this is on GitHub. So we have the queries are here. So on this repo observability pops up logic apps, all the queries that I showed here are in the repo, then the workflows are here. The In case you, you deploy these workflows and you want to test it, the payload is in the test folder. So you can create the same environment, same scenario in your own subscription, and then play around with it. But I would say that the queries are, are very reusable. So, because yeah, you can, you can customize them and, and make them ready for your own needs and solution. I think that's it for the demo. So just to recap what we covered today. So first, we had a very brief overview of Logic Apps standard. Then we covered the native integration of Logic Apps with application insights. We also covered the built-in observability features of Logic Apps how we can track custom metadata within the workflows. And that includes custom tracking ID, track properties in the actions, or, or even tracking error codes and error messages in the terminate action, and how this can be queried in, in application insights. And we also saw how from application insights, we can go using the, the run instance ID, we can go to the run history, and then go to that particular instance, see the run view, and troubleshoot exactly what happened to that message. We also saw how to query these tracing logs using KQL, and how to publish charts and reports using Azure dashboards. Well, I want to thank you uh, for your time, for tuning in, and I hope you learn something out of this, and see you next time.